Las coming Vegas, in Nevada, earlier this USA. week. The action continues as this contest is presented by Rock Nation Sports in association with Caribe Promotions and Campo Novo Sports, sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and sponsored by Corona Extra La Cerveza Mas Vina. Creed, starring Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone, everywhere on Thanksgiving weekend. Creed, fight for your life. Mexico, live it to believe it. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Tequila, Casa Torres, 100% agave tequila from the highlands of Jalisco. Corporate travel made simple. Visit ctmstravel.com for more information and Cavaciete. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout will be Steve Morrow, Ricardo Ocasio, and Don Trella. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Kenny Bayless. And now 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with gold and officially weighing in at 121 pounds. An excellent professional record consisting of 28 victories, including 22 big wins by knockout, only three defeats with one draw from San Leon Occidental, Mindoro, Philippines. He is Trian. Ding Tong Cameo, Francisco. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the black corner, wearing white. Yeah. Official weight 121, one half pounds. He's a two time Olympic gold medal champion and now. As a professional, a perfect record. 15 fights, 15 victories, including 10 wins by knockout from La Prueba, Cuba, living, training, and fighting out of Miami, Florida, USA, the former unified WBO, WBA, undefeated super bantamweight champion of the world, El Invicto, Guillermo El Chaco. these two to the center of the ring once he's got that TV cable out of the way. Okay, gentlemen, trucks are okay on both sides. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say you must obey. Good luck and God bless. Touch him up. So here we go, 10 rounds at Super Bantamweight between Guillermo Rigondo and Drian Francisco. It's been interesting this week listening to Rigondo talk to the press. Steve Lillis had a chat with him and he was more animated in that particular discussion than you often see him. You don't really get too much out of him at the best of times. Inside the ring, he's kind of sphinx-like in his serenity, really, because nothing ever really phases him. Generally, fighters don't really tend to get to him, but he is an enigma wrapped up in a puzzle, shrouded in a mystery. People are trying to get to the root of really what makes him tick he's just a brilliant boxer baron he's not appreciated as much as he should be and i, and I don't understand why could i i still think he's quite exciting to watch i know it, it, his skill is he's more exciting than floyd mayweather isn't he and, and, no. and, and maybe it's maybe it's skillful you know he's absolutely beautiful to watch and it's just, it's just so hard to hit clean just how fluent his work is when he puts his combinations together everything's just great I, I can't see how you, how you cannot like him Real Francisco 33 years old 32 fights 28 wins three defeats and a draw his last fight was in early September that was in the Philippines and letting go with the backhand well, he missed with the first left hand, backhand, because we can know. He took a jab and then shoot through another left hand there just to, just to play his opponent back. I haven't seen Rigondo 
for a little while last December against Isashi Amagasa in Japan. Amagasa retiring after 11. Rigambo, though, was down in that fight, did seem a touch more vulnerable maybe than he had done previously. He was dropped by top rank after that encounter. Now signed with Rock Nation, co-promoted by them in Curry Promotions. He's still the king of Super Bantamweight, and I don't think anybody would argue otherwise. I don't think Scott Quigg or Carl Frampton would argue otherwise. They've been doing their press tour this week, London, Manchester, Belfast. I saw Frampton yesterday, in fact, and he looked a little bit weary of it all, to be honest, but that's understandable. But, you know, 35 Rigondo with a long amateur career. There's always going to be questions about when does he get old overnight. He said he got hurt and dropped it. I don't think it was a serious knockdown. He still got put down. He made the guy pay for it after that, let's be honest. But what makes it so good is he's so hard to hit clean. You know, if, you know, if there are starting to be gaps in that, you know, if he is starting to get hit more frequent. And that aura goes. He's had a couple of kind of flash knockdowns, one against Cordoba, one against Donaire as well. But it was that fight against Donaire which really put him firmly at the top of the boxing tree. He won a world title after his ninth fight, but that 12th fight of his against Donaire, who just had an unbelievable year, was right up there in the pound for pound rankings. And Rigondo just schooled him all the way through the fight. Sent Donaire really packing back up to the weight above. He's now come back down again, but it was just a masterclass. Against a pound for pound fight at the time in, in Donaire as well. People forget that. The modern, one, the fact that he won, which is the fact that he said he schooled no, a, one of, one of the, the better fighters in, in this era. He missed it out, I almost took a jab back on the chest, but then threw the left hand again. May Francisco pay. Jorge Rubio in Rigondo's corner these days. He's been through a few trainers, Pedro Diaz, who trained Miguel Cotto for a spell. They parted company after the defeat to Austin Trout. Diaz was on the Cuban staff, actually, when Rigondo won his gold, so a familiar figure. Ronnie Shields, Freddy Roach, Ismael Solis have been in that corner as well but after over 400 amateur fights two olympic gold medals and at 35 years of age now you, you wonder how much training he really needs in a sense oh, no, 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 no. Let him up. All right. but he's never been in that sort of fight where he needs advice to get him out of trouble have he? he's always had enough knowledge and ability just to, to do it himself but you know sometimes you need a good cornerman to, to help you out but he hasn't been in that situation yet maybe he no, never no, will no, 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 no. let him up let up kick that head Francisco actually started his career at flyweight has moved through the weights super bantamweight bordering on featherweight <laughs> and he looks big I just think because it's just because Rigondo is so short and that's where Rigondo's problem lies is he hasn't really got much scope to go higher in the weights. Well, they're talking about him boxing oh, Lomachenko no, 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 with featherweight. No, 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 no. Skill for skill, it'd be a tremendous fight, but would, would, would Lomachenko be naturally too big, maybe? Well, the talk was of a catchweight fight, wasn't it? Rigondo okay. going up to 126 pounds, okay. if Lomachenko agreed okay. to no heavier than 134 on the night. There's been talk of it for quite a long time now. It's such a mouth-watering prospect, two of the best amateurs of recent years going up against each other. Lomachenko, of course, won his world title, just his third fight. We'd all love to see it, but it doesn't really seem to be any nearer happening. It's not doing too bad here, Francisco. He's getting beat, obviously, he's getting on box, but... Not giving Rigondo too many openings to, to land with clean punches either. The best kind of barometer we have for Francisco when you look at his record was the fight he had against Chris Avalos. That was for the vacant WBO NEBO Super Bantamweight title. He took Avalos 10 rounds, who was stopped by Carl Frampton in the fifth back in February, I think it was. 
I've lost decent fighter. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? WBO, NABO. Nice little title to have. Francisco just trying to reach a little bit with a jab and then throws the left hook. He's not landed anything, but Rigondeau is not really landed anything either. Jab there from Francisco. And maybe this is what people get frustrated about Rigondeau, is that you know, the ability he has. He can go through the key as quick as He's always safe first. Okay? But when he does perform, he is so exciting to watch. Even not as exciting as this fella, but who was? The real deal. An interesting chapter in his life over the last few years. Good to see him ringside. Look at those stories, just such an interesting one. Whenever you see the words Cuban professional boxer, you know there's a story there, there has to be a story <laughs> there. As he was described, I think, by Bruce well, Jonathan well, Butler well, in his well, book about Rigondo as the most expensive human cargo in history as he made that speedboat journey to Miami via Cancun. <laughs> Looked like he and Erislandi Lara tried to defect in the 2007 Pan Am Games. They claimed they didn't, that they went back to the camp of their own accord, but after that he was really treated as an outcast under constant surveillance. People watching him didn't compete in Beijing, eventually did make that treacherous journey, and it really is a treacherous journey. Gary Hyde had a work beater to take him to Ireland with Mike Perez, but he chose Miami, the likes of Gamboa Lara and Lania Solis were over there as well. Just hasn't out, quite out. turned out probably the way he'd imagine so far despite the fact that he's won two world titles and made a lot more money than obviously he would ever make back in his homeland stop, stop, stop. i remember talking to gary hyde about him and he told me that when rigondeau was in cuba he was making 20 dollars a week after he beat on air he bought a bentley for 240 grand <laughs> and therein lies the difference you're gonna go about the in cuba and you're gonna, you're gonna pick BMX. No, 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 no. That was the story, wasn't it? Was it Joel Casamayor got the BMX for yeah, winning a goal in, right, in Barcelona in 92? Yuri Ocas Gamboa, I think, if I remember correctly, sold his gold medal for a couple of hundred dollars to pay for his daughter's birthday party. It's that kind of story. Rigondo famously said he melted his into his mouth. To them in return for food, essentially. Mm. So that kept there from Rigondo. And this was just trying to force the fight a little bit more in this round. Mm. Well, I think we've heard quotes here. There's well, in terms of a purse for Rigondeau tonight, despite the fact that he stepped up at such short notice, is $350,000, which... It's not bad for a non-title fight. Not bad not if you sure. can get it. Uh, oh, 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 come on, sir. There you go. Watch out. You know, nothing happened there. There was no punches. Just to see how fluent he could pivot on that front foot. He needs to do a little bit more though, Rigon, uh, Rigon Bill. Snakes out that southpaw jam. There's already a few whistles. No, 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 no. The dissenting voices in, in the front. crowd, I, I think I could pick up there. Keep them in front. Oh, goes at the end of the round. The Mandalay Bay slowly filling up both of the main event fighters are in the building Miguel Cotto and Sal Canelo Alvarez Alvarez with a 14-week camp for this fight which seems like a very long camp to me but so Chepo and 
Eddie Reynoso know better than I do what he needs in the build-up to a fight. And there on the big screen are some pictures from backstage. Otto just being spoken to by the referee there, I think it was, now in a fairly more relaxed scenario. Freddie Roach, Marvin Samodio, Gallon McMillan, the strength and conditioning man on the right-hand side. They've kind of tailored his training as he's got older. He doesn't really do road work now. There's more kind of hydrotherapy, <clears throat> punching with the dumbbells in a swimming pool, that kind of thing. Someone's not happy. It's a familiar sound that Rigondo fights. I wish it wasn't, but it is. Some people have even nicknamed him Rigondo. <laughs> oh, yeah, you go. Took a little right hand there to Francisco. Just reached in with the right hand and lost his balance there, really, Drion Francisco. His father was a professional boxer at Featherweight 10 and 2. Younger brother Lloyd, also a pro. And that's why Francisco hasn't been too keen to over engage because when he does, watch his uh, left hand. Look at the expression on Brigando's face, he just doesn't change it, he doesn't care, just, just drops everything out, doesn't care about the boos and, and the jeers, he just waits for you to make a mistake. Well, this is how he does it, this is how he's always done it. He hasn't lost since 2003. It was Agassi Mamadov of Russia outpointed him pretty narrowly in the World Championships in Bangkok. World Champion in 2001 and 2005. He's been doing this really almost for as long as he can remember. Francisco just made to lose his balance and look rather clumsy there as he just flew by the left shoulder of Rigondo. Stop, stop! Look back. Quite interesting to hear what he had to say actually when Steve asked him about Quigg and Frampton. As a fellow professional, he said he just wished them all the luck in the world, really good for them that they're making that kind of money, which they will make at the end of February and that big big fight at the Manchester Arena and unless something extraordinary happens in that unless we have a kind of frotch beauté scenario where one absolutely annihilates the other then you'd imagine that there will be a rematch and they'll do it all over again well domestic rivalries you know, if that's what we call it you know have always been the most lucrative fights to have and they are two world-class fighters and obviously they're boxing for, for world titles unification match and yeah but if it, gets, if it gets anywhere near close it will definitely happen again and why not? There was talk early in the year, actually, that Rigondo would come over to the UK and get to a couple of fights and call Quigg or Frampton out. It never really materialised. I think it's probably quite difficult to get him away from home, to be honest, to travel to another continent. If you're not going to fight and get paid, then why would you? And too expensive, probably, as well. That would probably be the, the main reason. You probably won't wait too much money to come over here. Alvarez just getting his hands wrapped, going through those rituals, those procedures which are so important in the build-up to any kind of fight, but particularly a fight like this. How crucial is it at these kinds of stages that you have these kinds of things to concentrate on to keep you in the moment so that you can't look too far back, you can't look too far ahead, the doubts, the worries don't tend to creep in, you've got something in front of you, something to do. I think so. I think it's, it's vitally important. You've got to keep your mind occupied. I, you know, some fighters like to be broody and, and, and think before, think about what's going to happen in the fight you know, for hours in advance. I think when most fighters like to keep quite busy and active and, and you know, concentrate as it gets a lot closer. But you forget all experience. Even 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 Canelo, oh, for such a young man, only I think he's only 25. So much experience already, you know. He'd have, he might not be superstitious, I don't know, but he'd have his set routines and what he does before before every fight, and, that, and that's probably what he'd be concentrating on just going through the same set routine that he's always has done. 
Rick been successful all except for the one. Oh, Rick Ondo just looking a little bit more aggressive at the start of the fifth round. Well, I think Rick Ondo's good enough. You know, I think Francisco's done, done a bad job himself just to be first, first straight. We can do a little bit, but I think we're good enough to, to take a few little chances. Something, well, to, be, to his credit, you know, Lomachenko, we're going to do, always going to be compared with two time Olympic champion and you know, two real talented fighters who won world titles very early in their careers. He would take a few more chances, Lomachenko. I'm not saying he's a better fighter than Rigondo, though, I'm saying I think he would be a little bit more proactive. And that's why he probably doesn't get booed enough as much as or at all really compared to uh to Rigo here. I think Lomachenko won quite a few fans as well in that second pro fight when he took on Orlando Salido. Salido missed the weight, didn't really seem to have made too much effort to make it to be honest, because he knew he was gonna step up to super feather yeah. from feather. Lomachenko took the fight anyway. It was close, you know, he nearly he nearly got that win anyway, but he gave away the weight, made it more difficult for him. And he showed a lot of skill, a lot of courage as well, and then, of course, got it. And just as the professional fight, the people can move that quickly now. He fought a lot in WSB as well, so had that five-round format under his belt. Well, look how, look how good he, he has been. He beat, you know, beat Gary Russell. Gary Russell then goes on to win the WBC title straight after, you know. He, Boxing quality all the time. Any restless now? Good from Rigo there, doubling up with the left hand. Francisco tried to get on the jab himself, but it just disappeared over Rigondo's shoulder. And that balance stands. No, 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 no. Hold on. What he does, Rigondo, he takes a little half a step back every time. So you, you try, he wants you to overcommit so he can get you on the counter. But then you might think you're you're backing him up against the rope, and then once you get him on the rope, you go to throw a punch, and he spins off. His footwork's so good, he spins off, and you and you're wondering where he is. Francisco just missing with a big overhand right at the end of the fifth round. Midway through this contest scheduled for 10 at Super Bantamweight. This was a late addition to the card. We thought we'd be seeing Andre Ward against Alexander Brand. It didn't turn out. Ward had a knee injury. He's another one who's been frustrated by inactivity in recent times for a combination of different reasons. Double and triple your jabs up to move into this guy, you understand? You've got to go to work, right? You've got to start putting things in the jabs. Hello, loud. Rigondo sat impassively in his corner as the advice was being dispensed by his trainer. Francisco leaping in with a left hand at the start of the sixth round into the second half of this fight. Guillermo Rigondo in the white and green. Francisco in the gold and white. That's the problem Francisco got. Is Rigondo is not going, to, not going to take any risks, obviously. So he's waiting for you to make a mistake. So Francisco, to one, if he wants to win the fight, which I think he does, He's not going to, obviously, unless he catches Rigondo with it with a with a honey shot. But he's got to he's got to force the pace, and then when he forces the pace, he's walking on the punches. Well, the crowd getting more and more restless. can understand you know I've said I, I find I find Rigondo exciting I haven't found him exciting tonight that's for sure I think he's in, he's in with an opponent here that that he could have you know, a good opponent but not an opponent anywhere near his level so he, he should have shown he had a chance to, you know, to really put on a bit of a show could have been a bit more aggressive I think but his head move was so good he's so hard to hit anyway that he can make you miss when he stood right in front of you so I think he can take a few more chances against 
this level of opposition and, he, and he's, he's chosen not to. Well, Francisco was beaten soundly back in May, put down three times and stopped in the first round by a player called Jason Canoy, who was 23 wins, five defeats and two draws at that stage. I've read was training for a possible fight in Canada. It'll be interesting to see what Rock Nation try and do with him because really what do you do with him? Quig and Frampton are off the table. And also it's hard, you know. How do you if if the crowds don't like to watch him and if TV are not interested in him, but he still wants to get three hundred thousand plus dollars for a fight. How do you justify that? And I guess that's why HBO are happy to, to get rid of him. Unless he's in with someone like Gunnar, or he's in with someone like Frampton or Quinn. If them fights can be forced, if they can be made, you know, they're fighters that will maybe bring out, bring out the best. They will make him work, they will catch him in shots, and then he'll have to, have to, have to really turn it on. Well, I mentioned that Gunnar, after stepping up to featherweight and being wiped out by Nicholas Walters has come back down to Super Bantam. I think he's scheduled to fight Cesar Juarez for the now vacant WBO title because it was taken away from Rigondo on December the 11th. On there, after that defeat to Rigondo, saying that he hadn't really dedicated himself to boxing in the way that he should have. More training for that fight, he neglected such key constituents of it as just your basic groundwork, really. But he's still got all the hunger and all the desire left to achieve things. When you've achieved as much as he has, you just wonder whether that can ever possibly be true. You've scaled that mountain. Holly Holm there, who made big headlines last week with her knockout of the seemingly invincible Ronda Rousey. Twitter was aflame with that last week. Then fire combinations. One jab's not working on this guy. It's going to work, man. Typically good showing from the Cuban team in the recent World Amateur Championships in Doha in Qatar. Stand out. Probably Julio de Cruz, who won his third world title. Zaro Alvarez was excellent as well, but the Cruz is just a mercurial fighter. Need to do the business in Rio next summer, you would say. Lost in London 2012 to Yamaguchi Falcao, who was just the only person really ever to manage to get him to come forward. So many slick skills the crews in, in some ways not dissimilar to Rigondo, the Cubans in style, who follow a fairly similar kind of template. It's just all about patience, isn't it, with Rigondo? Just the patience that he'll wait you out until you make your mistake first. Which is a skill in itself, you know, it's, a, it's okay. sort of a Mayweather technique in many ways. You know, he's the same, sort of the same sort of fighter. You just wait it out until you make the mistakes and won't take any risks at all. But fighters who, who, who stay in people's memories, and not always the guys who, who have wars, but fighters like Leonard, you know, real technically superb fighters, but they would know what to take educated risks. They would take, they would, they would, they would go for the win. And that's why they're in our hearts and not just remembered as, as a great fight. They're, they're, they're loved as great fighters. There's a big, there's a big difference. You can take someone like Timothy Bradley, for example. He's an excellent all-round fighter. But in that fight against Ruslan Provodnikov, almost to try and prove a point, to prove that he could have that kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe war, to prove that he had the heart, the courage that some people were questioning. He just chose at times to fight completely the wrong kind of fight, just to just to put it out there that he was capable of doing that. 
nearly ended in disaster yeah, for yeah. him, really, but he had a point to make and he made it. He did. It was, it was ridiculously stupid tactics in many ways, but yeah, but he, he, he probably gained more fans from, from doing that than he had in all of his previous fights. I think the one main thing it probably taught him was to never, ever, ever do it again. <laughs> Vegas on the big screen. Go backstage again once more to Alvarez. Youngest of eight children, seven of them, boys all became professional boxers. All of them fought on the same card once actually. Cotto is taking it easy. He knows that the storm is going to break soon enough. He doesn't need to waste any undue energy. Backstage, those hands are wrapped. Mr. Hauser there in the background, the new Fox, Fox Nation columnist. The columnist, as I tried to say. <laughs> It's a second real monster fight in a matter of a few weeks, really. The previous one, Golovkin, Lemieux, which Steve described as the perfect storm, brought you on Box Nation not that long ago. That was a very entertaining, attractive encounter, and hopefully this one will be as well. It's difficult to see it not being without wishing to jinx it. Some, type, some fights you do just feel that you know, you know what you're going to get. You only you can only go by what you know, what you've seen in the past, what the fighters have produced in the past, and and you both you know with both uh, no, 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 Alvarez and Cotto that they give it 110% every time. Well, they, they go out to win a fight. Cotto probably more than than Canelo, to be honest, more than Alvarez. To be honest, he he's sometimes too brave for his own good. Francisco getting in close. Ricardo always managing to maintain that distance. Circumnavigating Francisco really with ease around the perimeter of the ring. I think it's been poor tonight from Rigondo. He, he had a platform here to, to produce something good again. And, and even though he's, he's winning the fight easily. But he's in with a guy who's fat. He's so inferior to him that he should be just put on a clinic. Look out. Look out. He should be peppering combinations no, no, everywhere. No, no, he no, could stand no, in front no, of this fella and spin him on a sixpence and just throw punches at will and, he, and he's not doing that. Just popping out that right hand. Francisco busy with the gloves, caught a left hand from Rigondo there. And landed with the right hand of his own just before that. <laughs> Mentioned there was Landy Lara earlier on, who he was at the Pan Am Games with in 2007. Lara done pretty well as a professional, I think it's fair to say, since he turned over, fought Alvarez, of course. Tricky fight for Alvarez to take, but he took it and got the win. Oh, nice right hand yeah, there from Francisco. Work out. Come on, work out. And Rigo walked right on to it. Yeah, you, you've got to give Alvarez his credit, but you know, after the Mayweather win, he came back with three, you know, two of them, except he had fights, but even the Angulu fight. Hmm. No, he made him a little bit, you know, it was sort of hard fight straight after me, rather, because that confidence. <laughs> well, he almost took a seat there on the uh, commentary table, Francisco, as he was spread eagle through the ropes. 
Alvarez's last fight, that encounter with James Kirkland, was everything that we thought it would be. And what was so great about it was coming just a week after Mayweather against Pacquiao, it was everything that that fight wasn't. And I'm not really talking particularly about what happened in the ring because Mayweather did what he's been doing for a couple of decades and won with ease. But 30,000 fight fans in Texas, outdoors, at a ballpark, great atmosphere, explosive fight. It was it was just tremendous stuff. That was the, the, the occasion and the fight we wanted, the sell box into the, to the, the fans who don't usually watch it, all the ones who paid and tuned in to watch what's the Mayweather fight. You know, we saw we had an opportunity there to do something great. And, and, it, and boxing, then it's, but they let us down, let's be honest. Mayweather and Pacquiao let us down. It won't be like that tonight. It's certainly why. You, you can guarantee it, can you? Whatever the result is, it, it guarantee, it's guaranteed to be a really good fight. Two rounds to go between Guillermo Rigondo and Trian Francisco. Super Bantamweight, 122 pound division, which is where Rigondo's been since he's been 17 years old. He's just never grown out of it, and that really is behind the reluctance to step up in weight and give an opponent an unnecessary advantage. This is better from Rigondo. Being a little bit proactive. Heavyweights earlier on, and you were mentioning that there could be a changing of the guard coming, that there will be fairly shortly because Klitschko can't go on forever. Yeah. Cuban heavyweight in action in uh, December. Luis Ortiz is back out again, I think, against Bryant Jennings. Good fight. No, 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 no. I've already done it at heavyweight. There's been a couple who threatened to. Odlenia Solis fits into that bracket, as does Mike Perez. Chilling knocker, wasn't it? Povetkin with, with Perez a few months ago. So even there, no, you know, Rigo, you know, his, his beautiful footwork and you know, just spins Francisco effortlessly, leaves him on the ropes, taps him with a couple of punches and walks away. It's just been like a sparring session, hasn't it, for, for Rigondo? It has. Francisco's done his best, really, to try and draw the fight. He's gesturing to the referee even there to tell him to tell Rigondo to engage. <laughs> left hand from Rigondo, followed by a left hand there from Francisco as well. It's Francisco for taking this fight at such short notice. Trying to rush Rig on there, Rig on there, Francisco. You look at the ring pound for pound rankings, and Rigondo is in fifth place. It's topped by Roman Gonzalez, the outstanding Nicaraguan flyweight. You can't get enough of him, Barry, can you? Oh, he's the most, com he's the most complete fighter out here. Today. Boxing today, he's absolutely phenomenal. Does, it, does everything well, comes forward, he's defensively good as well. Power, without that, he's not a knockout to add, he's really got good power in either hand. He's a brilliant little fighter. I read a great little story about him, I think it was in Boxing Monthly a, a few issues ago, where he was talking about how when he started boxing in Nicaragua when he was seven years old, he used to hang a plastic carrier bag full of sand from the branch of a tree and use it as a punch bag. We, we all do that in Wales, I don't know. What's so special about that? So three more minutes between these two. Tenth and final round, the two fighters touch gloves in the centre of the ring. Marking up on the forehead of Drian Francisco. 
various dignitaries just moving into their seats ringside in anticipation of the main event. Before that, still Takashi Mayura defending his WBC Super Featherweight title against Francisco Vargas, the undefeated Francisco Vargas. 22 wins, no defeats, and one draw. Looking to avenge a series of losses that Mayura has inflicted on his fellow Mexicans. Been dubbed the Mexicutioner by some, Mayura. Looking for that rematch with his fellow Japanese fighter, in fact, Uchiyama, which doesn't seem to be any closer to happening. They have fought on the same card since Uchiyama beat Mayura, but they're not overly keen on unification bouts between their own fighters in Japan. Jabbing to the body. The art of boxing, and you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm more of a boxer than a fighter, obviously I was. And it's, it's hit and not be hit, and, and that it's a skill in itself. And Rigado can do it better than almost anybody. You can all, but just a, to just do enough every time, and that's what he's done today. Just done enough, no more. You know, I think, I think he's. On, on a big stage again, I think he's, he's let us down a little bit. We've got to be honest. I think this is a, a fight made for him just to just to, sh to show everything, show it all, show a little bit of power, a little bit of explosiveness, try and sell himself so he can get a bigger fight. The question is, though, at this stage of his career, at 35 years old, with all those amateur fights, all that schooling, can he change? Is it possible for him to change? It's just not the way he's wired. It's just not in his DNA to change. Well, that's, that's very true. And I, don't think, I don't mean solely to change his style because you know he's always going to be a defensive genius. But you no, know, he could do a bit more. Well, this is a, this is a choice. This is just not that he can't he can't adapt. This is just a choice for him to do, to do this. It's almost like a, like a, an arrogance, a stubbornness to just. I'll do what I want to do when, I'll, when I do it. Francisco again made to miss by some distance there. Tries to wave Rigondo in as we get into the final few seconds of this one. And the bell goes at the end of the 10 rounds. Francisco with a rather frustrated look on his face there of a man who came to fight, tried to fight, but whenever he looked to engage with his opponent, yeah. he was chasing a ghost really. Doctor just having a look at uh, a little nick just on the forehead there. Good honest night's work there from Trian Francisco, and the expression on Rigondo's face has not changed one glimmer from when we first saw him walk into the ring. When we first saw him ten years ago, pretty much. I think he's a bit of, very much of a complex character. He's very no emotion. Doesn't seem never seems to be bothered, does he, about anything? And, and he's not one of these cubers who throws his career away, career, career away by overeating. You know, like you see so many go up in the weights and, and just live a bad life. He looks like he's lived, always lives a good life, but you know, his, his unwillingness to to want to just maybe just take the initiative in fights is what's possible. You're going to freeze it, you know, but it has so far. He's frozen himself out of any sort of decent fights, you know. You can't blame anyone who looks after Quigg or Frampton wanting to match him with Rigondo because they th they're thinking, forget how good he is, are you going to sell that fight? And I'm, a, and I'm a Rigondo fan, by the way. I think he's absolutely genius. Well, it's the very simple risk versus reward equation the risk is high the reward is low and in a short dangerous career those aren't the kinds of fights you want to be taking not when you don't have to he should have based himself in germany he would have loved him more in germany than he would have in, 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 in the states is it and here at mandalay bay to after 10 himself. rounds of action we go to the judges scorecards we have a unanimous decision don trello scores it 97-93. Steve Morrow and Ricardo Ocasio both have it 100-90. to 90. All three go 
to the winner by unanimous decision, and now the WBC Silver International Champion, Guillermo El Chaco Rigondeo. Well, Rigondeo cranks a smile, picks up a WBC Silver International title as well. One of the judges gave Francisco three rounds there, the other two. Well, for them, it was a shutout. Rigondo goes 16 on uh, and 0, oh, and we'll just have to wait and see what is next for this multi talented Cuban. Yes, we will have to wait and see what's next. He was stripped of his WBO title and he was upgraded. Las Coming Vegas, in earlier this USA, week. The action continues as this contest is presented by Rock Nation Sports in association with Caribe Promotions and Campo Novo Sports. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and sponsored by Corona Extra La Cerveza Mas Fina. Creed, starring Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone. Everywhere on Thanksgiving weekend, Creed, fight for your life. Mexico, live it to believe it. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Tequila, Cazadores, 100% agave tequila from the highlands of Jalisco. Corporate travel made simple. Visit ctmstravel.com for more information and Cavaciete. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout will be Steve Morrow, Ricardo Ocasio, and Don Trella. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Kenny Bayless. And now 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with gold and officially weighing in at 121 pounds. An excellent professional record consisting of 28 victories, including 22 big wins by knockout. Only three defeats with one draw from San Leon Occidental, Mindoro, Philippines. Francisco. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the black corner, wearing white, official weight 121, one half pounds. He's a two-time Olympic gold medal champion, and now, as a professional, a perfect record. 15 fights, 15 victories, including 10 wins by knockout from La Prueba, Cuba, living, training, and fighting out of Miami, Florida, USA, the former unified WBO, WBA, undefeated super bantamweight champion of the world, El Invicto, Guillermo El Chaco. I'm going to come right underneath you in this place. <laughs> referee just calling both of these two to the center of the ring once he's got that TV cable out of the way. Okay, gentlemen, trucks are okay on both sides. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say you must obey. Good luck and God bless. Touch them up. So here we go, 10 rounds of Super Bantamweight between Guillermo Rigondo and Drian Francisco. It's been interesting this week listening to Rigondo talk to the press. Steve Lillis had a chat with him and he was more animated in that particular discussion than you often see him. You don't really get too much out of him at the best of times. Inside the ring, he's kind of sphinx-like in his serenity, really, because nothing ever really phases him. Generally, fighters don't really tend to get to him, but he is an enigma wrapped up in a puzzle, shrouded in a mystery. People are trying to get to the root of really what makes him tick. He's just a brilliant boxer, Baron. He's not appreciated as much as he should be. And I, and I don't understand why, because I, I still think he's quite exciting to watch. I know, it, it, his skill is he's more exciting than Floyd Mayweather, isn't he? And I don't know. And, and maybe it's maybe it's skillful, you know. He's absolutely beautiful to watch, and it's just, it's just so hard to hit clean. It, it's just how fluent his work is when he puts his combinations together. 
everything's just great. I, I can't see how you, how you cannot like him. Real Francisco, 33 years old, 32 fights, 28 wins, three defeats and a draw. His last fight was in early September, that was in the Philippines. the backhand. Well, well, he missed with the first left hand, backhand, didn't even know. He took a jab and then shoot through another left hand there just to, just to play his opponent back. I haven't seen Rigondo for a little while, last December against Isashi Amagasa in Japan. Amagasa retiring after 11. Rigondo, though, was down in that fight did seem a touch more vulnerable maybe than he had done previously he was dropped by top rank after that encounter now signed with rock nation co-promoted by them in curry promotions still the king of super bantamweight and i don't think anybody would argue otherwise i don't think scott quigg or carl frampton would argue otherwise they've been doing their press tour this week london Manchester Belfast, I saw Frampton yesterday in fact and he looked a little bit weary of it all to be honest but that's understandable but, you know, 35 Rigondo with a long amateur career there's always going to be questions about well, when does he get old overnight he said he got hurt and dropped it I don't think it was a serious knockdown he still got put down. He made the guy pay for it after that, let's be honest. But <laughs> what makes it so good is he's so hard to hit clean. You know, if, you know, if there are starting to be gaps in that, you know, if he is starting to get hit more frequent, then that aura goes.